So AEW All Out is coming up on Sunday night, live from Chi-Town. Yee-haw. And there is no doubt that this is an important, significant show in the early history of All Elite Wrestling. Is it the most significant? No, probably the first one would be what you classify as the most significant because you had to have a starting point. You can't have a second one or any other one without having the first pay-per-view. But this feels like a big deal. This feels like it has a little more weight and a little more importance than some of the other pay-per-views, and I would certainly agree with that. I mean, it is an important, important show. And it's going to be incumbent upon AEW to deliver and deliver big on Sunday. Now, that's kind of my standard thought process when you talk about a show like this. But the reality is, if we're really talking about reality, you know, this shit is being booked towards the hardcore audience that's going to largely gag it down and accept it no matter what AEW puts out. I mean, let's be real. They're the ones that are largely going to be buying the pay-per-view. They're the ones that are largely going to watch this no matter what. They're largely going to be the ones that the show is geared towards. So I have to remind myself as somebody who's not into some of those um, hardcore, I take this shit way too seriously when it comes to the moves and matches crap, you know, not part of the Meltzer Magoo universe, you know, this type of show may not necessarily be for me. It's not designed for me. So as I think about like, hey, to do this and hey, to do that, like, it ain't necessarily the jam. Now, with that said, I will be watching the show, absolutely. I will be reviewing the show. And when I see them things do, see them do some really dumb things, I'm going to call that out, unlike a lot of others. As you certainly know when it comes nowadays to your wrestling journalists, your wrestling media, your even your wrestling YouTubers. A lot of them are so in the tank and bed with AEW, their buddies, their guy friends, their girlfriends that are working in AEW that it's hard to know who actually is remaining unbiased. It's hard to know who actually has a legitimately valid, you know, objective opinion anymore. So Anyways, enough of that soapbox, but let's talk about this show. Because I look at this show and I say, you know, for a company that only does a pay-per-view every three months, which is both a good thing and can present some challenges, it's both, it doesn't have to be so clear-cut one way or the other, um, it feels like you could have done better. You have some stuff on the show, obviously, that has purpose, that has meaning, that has significance, that's going to matter a lot. That's fine. But damn, man, you look at some of these other matches and you're like, is this really what you wanted to put on one of your four pay-per-views for the year? Like the Casino Battle Royal number one contenders match with all the ladies trying to get a future title shot. No issues with that. You got such a schmoz of a roster anyways, you might as well find a way to get them all featured. That said, though, if you're still doing the damn rankings things and tracking records and everything, like... Why would you sit there and have that system if you're just going to throw out number one contenders matches like this? But it is whatever. But when it comes to that match, there should only be three possible winners. Thunder Rosa, Jade Cargill, and Ty Conti. That's it. Conti, Cargill, Rosa. If they're considering anybody else, they're stupid. There's another one of these Joshi wrestlers. It's fucking dumb. You should be trying to use this match as a platform to spring somebody into that spot and, you know, you could say, well, you just did Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa, but now the dynamics have changed a little bit. The championship is involved, and fuck it. Like, it was so good. Like, those ladies went out there and killed themselves in that main event of Dynamite, one of the really great things that this company has ever done when it comes to their women, which, by the way, is a very, very short list. Um, I don't know who they're going to have win this. Honestly, it should be Jade. And you're going to say, well, she's kind of green, and she's not that... Let's be clear, a lot of these women on the AEW roster are not very clean when it comes to their in-ring work. They're botchy and a bit dangerous. Jade's no different, but she's certainly no worse. In fact, she's better than some of the other ones. Look at the bitch she got wrestling Britt Baker in the women's championship match. Excuse the hell out of me, but how the hell does Chris Botchlander get a damn AEW title match? Of any kind. Of any kind. Who's booking this crap? God, every time you see Botchlander get in the ring for a match, 
You legitimately have to worry for the health and safety of not just herself, but a freaking opponent. I'm not calling Statlander Botchlander just because it's funny. I'm calling it because it's true. The only thing that makes sense about this is if you're just going to have Britt Baker win anyways, which is exactly what the hell should happen. Because there's no purpose for a Botchlander. You've done nothing with her. Feels kind of random, frankly. So, assuming Britt Baker retains, I'll be curious to see who her next opponent's going to be. I understand, as I talked about at the beginning of this preview video, that you know this show is not necessarily designed to appeal to me. It's designed to appeal to those hardcore fans that are ride or die no matter what. The hardest of the hardcore, the serious of the most serious wrestling fans. Pure wrestling fans. And I'm sure a match like John Moxley versus Shitoshi Kojima is going to be that type of match that they geek out to, that type of match that they love, that type of match that they melt down the internet for on Sunday night. But I think this whole concept is kind of stupid. To me, I look at a guy like John Moxley, his best work is when he's working in a program or a feud that has intensity, that has real grudge to it, that has some heat to it. Like, this is just some random fucking dream match showcase bullshit. That should not be Moxley's role. I want to be clear. Like, he should be a main player for you or in that second tier, but feuding with people on your actual roster. He should be helping develop and carry stories and storylines, not working these, oh my god, he's going to wrestle Kojima, who gives a shit? I mean, I know who gives a shit, but come on. There are better uses for John Moxley than this. And frankly, for AEW, you have enough other people on your damn roster that you need to figure out a way to freaking use. It's kind of lazy, if you ask me. So a lot of people are going to like this, and I'm going to think it's stupid, and that's just the way it is. Paul White versus QT Marshall has no business being on this pay-per-view except for the fact that it's a pay-per-view match, the first one in AEW for Paul White. If this is anything other than a 20 or 30 second squash, fuck it, it's stupid. Especially when you look at them having Billy Gunn turn on Paul White on Dynamite Wednesday. Now I just sit there and say, I'd rather see Billy Gunn versus Paul White if we're going to do this crap. Like I said, some of this shit I look at and I say, this feels like it belongs on Dynamite, not a damn pay-per-view. The TNT Championship, Eddie Kingston versus Miro. Okay, I can get down with this. I don't know if the storyline is that hot or that interesting, but a good contrast of opponents here. Clear established like monster type of heel. Clear established, you know, relatable baby face. Those dynamics work. How they mix in terms of a match in the ring on Sunday night, we will see. But this, I can say probably at least somewhat worthy of the pay-per-view, although I would like to have seen a little more heat behind it. Uh, the career match with Chris Jericho and MJF, obviously we've been building to this for a long time, has to be on the pay-per-view. Um, maybe, maybe there's a thing of wondering, you've had MJF beat Jericho so many times, why would you have him lose to Jericho now? Then you're saying, okay, some of you that still you want to see Jericho wrestle, like why would you have Jericho lose here? Are there more people that he could put over? Uh, weird dynamic to me. But it storyline, it makes sense in terms of there had to be a purpose for MJF to accept a match with Jericho and to be able to say that he was the guy that ended Chris Jericho's in-ring career would certainly make sense from a kayfabe standpoint. So I get it. Um, we'll see how this match is. I know it's just a career match. Is there any type of special stipulation to it or anything? In fact, let me look right now. Um, no, it just says it's the final fight on the AEW website. So I would have thought this would have been some type of street fight or other thing, but you've already done some other extreme stipulation type of matches. So maybe it's not, um, who's going to win this? Are we really going to have MJF? Like to go this out of the way to have him wrestle one more time makes you think that Jericho might win. I don't know. Um, the AEW world championship. Now this is where it gets kind of interesting because this match has no business main eventing this pay-per-view. It does not. If Kenny Omega wants to show that he can play big boy wrestling and he wants to do his own version of elite breakfast club business, then he must insist that this match main events. Oh, yes. 
And when you look at the way the angle played out to close out Dynamite, like it'd be really odd to do that type of angle for a world title match that didn't main event. But you also were including the tag teams. Obviously, they're not going to be main eventing. Um, but, yeah. Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega feels like a really good, like, semi-main event world title match when you have a match that matters more on this card. Because you're probably assuming Kenny Omega is going to win. And frankly, if I was just looking at this, like the match that we most likely would look at and say, from a pure wrestling standpoint, what is everybody's favorite match of the night probably going to be? The one that's going to get the highest star ratings, the one that's going to have people melting on the internet the most. It's probably the steel cage match between the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros for the tag team titles. So not only is Cage Omega not the biggest drawing card of this show, we all know what the fuck is. Not only that, it's not even the most interesting or potentially uh, exciting match for the hardcore fan base that you're appealing to when it comes to elite members. There ain't no way you can fucking main event this. Ain't no way. If he does, though, I'll be disgusted with Kenny Omega and at the same time incredibly proud of him because I'll be like, that's how you play main event politics. You say, well, the world title's got to go on last can't send the people home disappointed. Oh, can you imagine, baby? Which brings us to the match that has to main event, that needs to main event, that should main event, is the only logical main event. That is CM Punk versus Darby Allin. This has to be it. It's what the people in Chicago are going to care about the most. It is the number one draw for this pay-per-view in terms of people buying this pay-per-view. It is seeing CM Punk wrestle for the first time in seven and a half years. The Darby Allen choice was both somewhat logical and also kind of strange. Um, the nostalgia of, oh my, or the good feelings of, ah, Punk's back and he's happy to be back. Now we actually got to get to fucking business. The reality is, though, is that the Chicago crowd come Sunday night, unless you gassed them by already having a four hour long pay per view before you get to this match, which no one AEW is certainly effing possible, this match needs the main event because you run the risk of nothing else being able to follow it. You run the risk of, if you put this in the middle of the show, that the crowd's going to be so amped and they're going to be so into Darby and in particular CM Punk here in his home stomping grounds that none of these other matches on the card are going to work. The only change to that would be if you came and you said, hey, Cage and Omega is going to main event because that's when you're going to have a Daniel Bryan come out. Brian Danielson is going to make his AEW debut, which we're all assuming is going to happen at this point. Maybe he's going to be the challenger to Andrade since that Andrade Pac match got pulled off the card. Or maybe that's where an Adam Cole comes. Like, who the hell knows with all of that? You know, you could certainly sit there and do CM Punk Darby Allen and have Daniel Bryan walk out at the end of it, although I would caution them from doing so. Keep those two separate for now. No reason to go right into it. Um, but this match has to main event. I'll be very interested to see how CM Punk looks, see what, if any, ring rust there is, see what type of chemistry dynamics you can work between CM Punk and Darby Allen, what type of chemistry and flow they have in their match. I am interested to see that. I can't lie. Um, like if I, I was saying, I almost feel like you should have Daniel Bryan, if you're going to have him come out here at All Out, you should almost sit there and damn have him come out to start the show, like get the crowd hot from the very beginning. Um, but maybe you're bringing him out to one of these other matches. I'm not really sure. But I'm sorry, like, outside of the qualifier that you get the show to be four damn hours long and you still haven't done CM Park versus, Punk versus Darby Allen, the crowd might, might kind of be cooked at that point. This match has to main event this show. It has to. You don't want to risk nothing else being able to follow it. Frankly, right now, you guys know what I'm talking about. Even in terms of the championship man matches with the Elite, you're much more interested and excited about Young Bucks versus Lucha Bros. Let's keep it real. Your world champion you don't care as much about right now, so why the fuck would he have to main event, especially when you're very likely not going to have a title change here? We'll see what happens Sunday in the past couple of weeks in terms of AEW and what they've done with their show since Punk's debut has kind of been meh. I'm a little worried about this show, but hopefully they come through and deliver for the people that are going to pay 50 bucks to watch this shit on Sunday night like me.